a former lawmaker, a former senator representing Kaduna Centra, and human rights activist Sheo Sonny, who's also joined us from our studios in Abuja. Mr. Sonny, thank you for joining us. You tweeted earlier about, you know, how protesters should respond, especially after Mr. President's speech. You mentioned that they should suspend the protest and raise a team to dialogue with government, both at the federal and state levels. How does this work as someone who has a rich history in this regard? Uh, thank you very much for having me. Well, first of all, uh, we must recognize and appreciate that Nigerians have the right to express their opinion and the right to assembly and the right to rally. They have the right to protest. That one, is, cannot, that one cannot be denied. But the protest that is allowed by the constitution of our country and the laws of our land is peaceful protest. Uh, I come from Kaduna State. The protest that took place is not a peaceful protest. And protest has rules of engagement, and which in a democratic society, demands are set and then demands are negotiated. If you call for a protest, there should be warning protest. There should be also a space for dialogue. And what I tweeted was that after the first three days of the protest, there is need to suspend the protest and raise a team to negotiate with the government at the federal and state level and then restate your demands so that at the end of the day, there will be something that is achieved out of the protest. Life were lost, properties were destroyed, many people were rendered homeless, people made sacrifices, but at the end, there should be something to which has been delivered and achieved out of this protest and it's done with a strategy. Uh, if you keep on protesting from day one to the last day and nothing is achieved, it means the whole effort is wasted. Uh, I'm speaking from Kaduna State and when a protest is called, we have our concern. Uh, we come from history and experiences of protests that degenerated into violence and we have been proven right with what has happened. I cherished and uphold and, 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 and praises those who out of their conscience and conviction roll out in the street to express their opinion. But those who looted shops, vandalized government offices and then molest orders, snatched phones, unleashed terror and violence in the name of peaceful protest, uh, this is not allowed in our democratic system. And especially in Kaduna State today, you can see what has happened. Um, some persons were sharing both money and Russian flags and it means that the protest is not simply about the cost of living, it's not about the hardship, it's not about the insecurity. There are people with ulterior or hidden agenda that are, all, that are either part of the protest or infiltrated the protesters and led us to where we are today. So that is why right. protests need leadership, a leadership that will yeah. drive the protest and control the crowd. Yes. I hear you clearly, Senator Sonny, and I understand the, you know, potential or rather the prospect, the possibility of this protest being hijacked in some parts of the country. But what are the prospects of this dialogue that the federal government is talking about, especially when you look at it vis-a-vis -vis the demands of these protesters? They are specifically asking that oil prices should return to 100 naira per liter. And if you listen to Mr. President's speech on Sunday, um, he appears to have defending removing full subsidy and uh, abolishing multiple foreign exchange systems as tough decisions he needed to have taken. He considers them a long-term solution to tackle Nigeria's ailing economy. That seems to be the very soul of his administration's strategy. How realistic do you think these demands are on the side of the, pros, uh, of the protesters. And what's the prospect of the dialogue that government is calling for? You see, every protest should at least end in a negotiating table, except if it has ulterior motives of overthrowing a government. Then you don't need to negotiate with anyone. You simply want to evict uh, the government out of office. But if you look at Nigeria's history, 
uh, ASU do protest, the NLC do protest, Nigeria, National Assembly Nigeria students do protest. And each time they initiate this protest, there will naturally be an opposing statement from the government that we cannot meet up your demand and we, we don't have the resources to do what you want us to do. And then uh, what they do is suspend and then give room for dialogue. If you have 10 demands and the government are able to meet up three or four of it, and then you give notice that uh, if the rest of the demands are not met, uh, we will resume our protests either in October or November. And then you give room for the government and consultations going on, and then it's achieved. But if you actually came out to the streets simply because you want to remove government and restore military rule, you will not have uh, dialogue as, as a means of ending or achieving your aim. So that is my own view. Uh, Labour right. do make such kind of statement and go and protest, but they negotiate. The same thing with NLC, and the same thing with uh, right. ASU and other uh, rights groups. And this is hey, how clearly. To, uh, the process let me be. let me Let me bring back Mr. Daguro into this conversation. Uh, Mr. President's speech on Sunday also highlighted what he considers the gains and the things he's been able to achieve in about 14 months thereabout. One of which is doubling, according to him, doubling the aggregate government revenue. I, I think he mentioned hitting over 9.1 trillion naira in the first half of 2024. Do you think these protesters are also making demands from the respective governors who are now getting more from the Federation account? You have to understand that some of the protesters, uh, they don't understand uh, the, the rudiments or the fundamentals of our economy. And, and this is one of the reasons why we have to uh, begin to do more advocacy and to reach out to the people at the grassroots and to communicate to them the reasons why we are doing this. I mean, that's why you have agencies like uh, uh, the National Orientation Agency and some other agencies and that's why you have the opportunity to reach out to the people and to make them understand. Most people, you know, they have this illusionary uh, uh, idea that, uh, look, you, you have to go back to, you know, if it's possible, 100 naira per litre. It's, it can't work. And these are the things that the government has taken the food by the horn. They've done it. But then they want to know if uh, NMPCL is coming up and say, listen, this is why, this is how much this is costing us. This is what we are doing. And this is what we've been able to. It is not just the president alone that should be doing this. Other agencies have to come up with these uh, uh, programs whereby they will be reaching out to the people, maybe quarterly, maybe monthly, and so that people will be informed. And then when people are well informed to the grassroots level at, at the same time, then it's a lot more easier. And not everybody will sit down and watch the TV. Not everybody will have the opportunity of listening to the radio. But then go to the grassroots, have this dialogue with them directly, and let the people just understand what we are going through. I think we need to work on that. Another thing, like you just said, is this. You know, it is clear that we, we are moving out of uh, bankruptcy into a situation whereby we are having yields. And these yields, they want to know, people, citizens want to know, how are we making this yield, what are we making, and what are we using it for? If we see all these things, like the president has said he has done, and we can see it, we feel it, but then it, it, not everybody understands it, not everybody feels it. That is the issue. So we need to do more. The state government have yeah. to do more. The state government have to communicate it more to the people. And that is why this issue of the local government autonomy is a good thing. Let's begin to ask the local government chairman and women the, 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 the way, the, what they collect, what they spend it on. Let us know the budget of the local government. Mm -hmm. This is where... You know, most of these are leaders from the grassroots, from the level, world level. They okay. have to begin to be opening up, to be transparent with some of these things, so that it will not be that the whole country will be looking up to Abuja and the president alone. We have people who are representing us. We have senators, we have reps, we have chairmen, we have councillors. What, what, are, what are these people? It's not when there's an issue. I hear we you have clearly. to see all of them on TV. Yes. You know, let this thing be a continuous thing so that people will be informed. I think we need a better information system. We have to wrap up this conversation. Senator Sonny, if I can get your closing remarks very quickly. I'm sure you're following the what appears a recalcitrant reaction to Mr. President's speech on Sunday, largely from the camp of those who are on the streets. How do you think government should move on, you know, following this reaction, the insistence to get back on the streets to protest, 
learning from occurrences in Kenya, for instance, and what's going on currently in the UK? Well, my position remains very clear that uh, both the government and the protesters should make room for dialogue and negotiations on the demands. Uh, I am very much concerned in the sense that if this demand is about subsidy, is about hunger, is about hardship and the cost of living, then it should be restricted to that. We can't have a peaceful protest where people are looting shops, vandalizing government offices, and raising, uh, raising Russian flags. It means that it's not simply about the cost of living. There are ulterior motives behind this, and this has to be checked. The, the protesters are either infiltrated or they are either sponsored, as far as the case of our own state is concerned, which there is a need for an immediate action. Those who call the protest must show leadership and come out forward and control the monster they created for the peace and stability of this country. Joe Sane, former Senator representing Kaduna Centre and human rights activist, thank you so much for joining us on the conversation this evening. Joe Femi Dagoro is former president, Nigerian German business group in Germany. Gentlemen, thank you for your contribution on the program. And that's our show today, everyone. Thanks for being a part of it. You can watch it again at midnight and also at 6 a.m. tomorrow. I am Nifemi Ogunsoye.